Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Ed. Today, I want to talk about Workhorse. Now, I'm going to go through some of the news, due diligence, and try to give you a good sense of this one, as well as with technical analysis. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this one. Workhorse, I covered this multiple times before, although today we're going to give you a whole different perspective. So, for this company here, what they specialize in is electric delivery vehicles, specifically in the last mile. Now, they were competing for a United States Postal Services contract, which they actually didn't get. So, let's take a look into how they've done since then. So, the latest news comes in on May 10th, 2021, and it says Workhorse and EAVX will be developing a next-generation delivery vehicle that leverages Workhorse leadership in the last mile delivery EVs, control softwares, and drone technologies, as well as EAVX and the JB, Pointexter, and Co. group of companies' decades of experience with vehicle body engineering, construction, and assembly. With the rapid growth of the last mile delivery sector, the increased demand for deliveries and the expectation or expansion of product types being delivered. A broader option of vehicle sizes and configuration is another way for Workhorse to scale its manufacturing and distribution efforts and to accelerate sales and capture additional market share. And then we're going to move on from here. Uh, Workhorse partners with Coulomb Solutions to supply its CATL battery systems. So CSI and CATL, CATL's lithium battery packs power over 330,000 commercial electrical vehicles. The commentary here says, We selected the CSI slash CATL battery system for the proven performance over the last decade in the commercial EVs worldwide, as well as the high safety levels, lightweight, wide range off the shelf battery systems from 40 to 600 kilowatts per hour, said the CEO. These systems will enable Workhorse to offer our customers a variety of EV driving ranges and with an excellent battery warranty backed by a global blue chip enterprise. Incorporating CSI slash CATL battery systems in our vehicles enables us to provide a dual benefit of the overall superiority performance while supporting a greater payload capacities. We're going to move on from here as well. Some of the latest business highlights. Prod produced a total of 38 C-Series vehicles year-to-date, more than doubling the number produced in comparison to combined previous three quarters. Entered into a strategic development agreement, the AVX as subsidiary of JB Pointexter & Co., a leading provider of commercial vehicles body solution to expand workhorse product line and create solutions for new customer segments. We can, over here as well, you see that they appointed Ryan Gall as president, commercial vehicles, and newly created responsible uh, or responsible for the company's commercial vehicles division, including the manufacturing facility in Union City. Appointed John Crapper as president of Aerospace, a newly created role responsible for workhorse unmanned aerial system businesses, which is drones basically. Uh, Grabber brings decades of C-level experience at public and private companies engaged in aerospace industry where he specialized in corporate strategy, business developments, and M&A. Now, Workhorse also appoints Ryan Gall. This is another article. We've already gone through that. And John Graber, again, another article that we got through that. And they also provided some updates relating to the USPS uh, releasing an issue. But that was way back in February 24th. And we already know that they, don't, they didn't actually get it. Now, another thing I do want to go over here today is a little bit of the EPSs. Now, yes, they have a downgrade around 13 bucks. Uh, they do have a bunch of downgrades uh, from 2021 and 2020. But I'm going to ignore that. So the EPS for the past five years was around 2680. And the EPS this year was around 220%. And it's expected next year to be around 82%. Now, the current price over book and price over sales don't really look that good. Um, and it looks like a lot of institutions and insiders are selling. So let's take a look at that. Now, from an institutional part, it looks like it actually they're buying, not selling, because I see more additions than selling in this perspective, but it's been a little bit more quiet than usual. Now, if you were to take a look into the insiders part, we're going to be able to see whether they're actually selling or is that some kind of uh, glitch in the system from Finviz. 
And if we were to go down here, you're able to see that they're and in fact, we do actually see they're selling. They're selling around 5,000, 3,000 shares a time. So it's not a big deal in my perspective. A big part of it is that these people get awarded some shares as part of their salary. And sometimes they just want to take it out because it's their money. And that's from my perspective there. Now, before moving on towards technical analysis, if you would like to see more contents like this, make sure to click that subscribe button down in the bottom right corner and turn your bell notifications on. Don't also forget to like. In the last video, I did talk about the pickups, etc. But for this time, we're not doing that and we're going to move on towards technical analysis. Now, from a technical analysis standpoint of view, what we actually start to see here is that the ADX is suggesting that there is a possibility for trend forming here. The volume percent R is closer towards the oversold and the overbought level, and the MACD is retracting a little, giving you a bit of a dangerous feel. However, momentum is actually positive, and we start looking at the moving averages. It seems that it is bull it's a bit more bearish than bullish on the moving averages. For instance, the 200 SMA is above the 50 SMA, and the 30 MA is above the 10 SMA, and the price point is below the 200 SMA. A big part of that is the drop from almost $43 all the way down to 7 bucks really hammered down the technical analysis and really hurt a lot of investors along the way. Now, this massive drop was related towards the USPC, uh, the United States Postal Services, not awarding them that contract and awarding it to one of their competitors. Now, on the stochastic fast and stochastic slow, both are actually dipping downwards. Being, You should be careful here for the next support and resistance. Now, in the sense, yesterday received one of the highest volumes or actually before yesterday thursday received one of the highest volumes ever but today friday we've actually seen a drop in that volume and so that is a warning sign because you get to see people are actually selling them buying now this is a red candle it went from 1833 all the way down to a low of around 1288 so that's something to concern us now the current bollinger band which is a momentum volume band you can expect this one to trade on the top at 1288 and in the bottom at 574. Now on the Fibonacci retracements, you see a significant resistance at 1555, 2799, 2501, 2924, 3527, and 4294. Now if we were to looking at, if we started looking at a support, you're looking at 709 here. Now on a price line action, we start looking at significant support levels and the very important one, the very next one is 1173. Below there, it's 932 and below there, it's 815. Significant resistance levels, however, you get to see the first one is at 1478. Above that, you're looking at 1654, a very strong one at the 1795 level. And then we have to look a little bit backwards towards the 20 bucks level being another one, 2299 or 2229. And then following that, the 2762 and a very, very strong one at the 3103. Comes to the question to head. What do you think about this one? The last mile delivery trucks, especially being EV, is a crucial part of the developments towards moving towards a greener environment, uh, an EV industry, uh, expanding relating towards that field. And I think that their product is very meaningful and that industry will continue to expand. However, the other part of this pickle is that it's kind of a little bit muddy on the fundamentals. Their sales, their production isn't there, but they have all the pieces to make sure it is. And so it's very interesting. And I would see this company within the next five years, whether it would go back to probably 30, 40 bucks within the next five years or straight out start to really struggle, having to release a lot of offerings, diluting, and it would be a mudslide. So what do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I do recommend that you go ahead and join our Discord server. There's a lot of amazing folks in here. Uh, we do a lot of discussions here into the trading floor throughout the day. A lot of people are in there and we do ask questions. You can ask me uh, any question you would like on there. Uh, we do post research and DDs and we hold weekly uh, chat sessions. And we also do have a lounge in there. So make sure to actually join that and join the fun there. Have a wonderful day and a good one.